Hi guys, uh, Ken Coleman from Ireland here again with my 15.6 inch XP pen and I hope you've been enjoying the tutorials so far. Um, here to show off my favourite toy that I use for all my work at the moment and let's go crack on with the tutorial. Hi everyone, so this video I'm going through the basics again of ZBrush but by using a primitive shape and not one of the um, preset project files like the primitive head. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is when we're in ZBrush is we want to go over to the right hand side of the toolbar and we can grab a Sphere 3D. Now as I said, just like other 3D programs like Maya, or you can double click on the object and it appears in the middle of the screen. That is not the case in ZBrush. If you watch my overhead video, what I need to do with my pen is drag down and my object will appear in the middle of the screen, okay? Now, it's not quite 3D yet. I need to press T on my keyboard and you can see there that the options on the right hand side have lit up to show that BPR and all these buttons are highlighted, which means now I have a rotatable 3D object which I can rotate by pressing again on the screen or by pressing Alt, I can move, okay? And that's a basic 3D shape and how I bring it in. I can change that into a, a square or any of these other shapes. But for sculpting, it's good to start with a sphere, okay? Now, the next thing we need to do in order to be able to sculpt is we have to press Make Poly Mesh 3D. So you press that button and our object, now it says in here, becomes PM 3D Sphere, which means Poly Mesh 3D. And now I can go over to my toolbar. I can change the material if I want, which I might do just so you can see. So I'll go back to my madcap skin. You can see it better on screen. And I'm also going to press transform again, like the last video and activate symmetry. So when I rotate, now I know I'm in the front because I have two cursors. Okay. So what I want to do is just play with a couple of brushes so you get the idea. Now I have a lot more brushes that I bought from different websites like Flips Normals or Bad King. The first, two thirds of this are really what you're looking at, okay? These ones down here are extra brushes I've got. Now, when I start showing you with the ZBrush 2020 version, these will be different again. So I'm gonna go clay build up and a Z add on so I can actually start to scratch and carve into my sphere. Okay, so that is with Z add. If I change to C sub, I'll do on the other side, a carve in rather than add see the difference okay now we're going to come on to geometry which I mentioned in the last video which is very important in ZBrush you might notice that when I'm carving it's getting really pixelated and breaking we go to geometry and we divide our polygon so now you can see it's much smoother there's more control we divide again more control we just have to be careful with the amount of of uh, polygons because if the KP becomes empty for millions all of a sudden our computer will start to lag and we get a much bigger file. So all I'm going to do in this video is show you now that we've made a sphere the common mistakes that people make in ZBrush okay common errors is what this video is going to be about and experimenting with some brushes. Okay so we have my object here I'm going to zoom it back a bit a common mistake I found with students in ZBrush in the past, and you'll notice how it's clicking, I'm pressing shift to click it in place. A common problem before is if you accidentally press T, you'll see my BPR and some of my buttons have turned off, and I go in and oh, here comes up another guy, and then I go again, and like, why am I not making 3D? Why can I not rotate my object? I've accidentally turned off 3D. If I press T, and frame, the last model that I dragged into the surface is available and that's my 3D object but now I'm going, why, why have all these crazy objects I have to get rid of? I've seen this happen to people quite a lot and it's very frustrating you literally go up here, you go to layer, clear layer what has happened is, like in Photoshop, you've flattened all your 3D objects into 2.5D and stuck them to the background okay, I'll do that again, I accidentally press T and now I have objects going all over the place I want to get rid of them, so I press T again, I know I'm back in 3D, I press Layer, drop down menu, Clear. And now my 3D object is back in the middle of the space. Okay, so that is a very common error that people make. 
in ZBrush. Okay, I just wanted to get that out of the way because I've seen it happen at the very, very start when people are trying to navigate the system here. Okay, and remember I press Alt and I can go scroll around the screen and touch anywhere outside the object and I can rotate it. Okay, so now I have this object made. I'm going to divide it one more time so it really smooths out, okay? Just for a bit of fun. And I'm going to delete my lower objects because I don't need them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the move brush, okay? And I'm going to very gently bring up my draw size. I'm going to pull out on the face here a bit so we kind of almost have a bit of a chin going on. Okay, it's a bit of a beaky chin. Push it back some more bit. Okay, I'm going to push in for some jaws in front. Bring out the eye area a bit. So maybe I'm some kind of getting some maybe some kind of monster shape. I'll push in here where I know the neck might be on my object. Kind of looking somewhat cross between some kind of cat and skull. And that's the thing about ZBrush, it's great for concepting, for just coming up with ideas without actually having any preconceived ideas. Okay, now that I've that done. I'm going to go back and find my creature brush. Okay, now we're using the last time. I'm just play with it a little bit. This time, bring down my intensity so I just have some light scaling on my monstrous creature kind of thing. Organic creatures are one of the best ways to start. Okay, so if I've done some organic sculpting here, with the clay build up, and, and using Z add and C Z sub for subtracting, which is cutting in. And now I've added a bit of texture. Okay. Now another way, before these creature brushes ever showed up to make textures and you can eventually make your own, is you go to alpha. So you go to stroke, drag on the standard brush, turn on the alpha and grab any of these alpha shapes. And what that'll do is you'll end up putting in these lovely shapes that can be used to kind of, here I'm creating like what look like veins. Okay, down the middle there. And I deactivate symmetry still on so we can see them, or I can turn to Z sub again and I can cut them in. So you can use them for veins, or cuts. Okay. Let's see what I'm getting at here now. Okay. And the next thing is I can change that. And I, oh, another one I love using is this one because it's very organic. Kind of like the shape of kind of veins you'd see on something like broccoli or cauliflower. They're great for making broken rocks, turtle shells, any, a lot of organic patterns can come out of that. Okay. I'm going to try something different on the other side. Some people love in ZBrush to learn how to do hard surface modeling. So hard surface would be if you want to make robots and stuff like that, okay? So if I use a polish brush, I can smooth out all of that area there with the polish. See what it's done? It's kind of shaved it down as if I was working with a very soft metal. Okay, and then I also go and get, um, let me see, the trim brush. I make the trim brush a bit smaller now so you can really see the definition. And I still have it on Z sub, so I'm cutting in very flat areas. See? You could use this for carving. Carving in areas into my model. You can see the difference between using clay and using the carving of trim. So now I'm adding to it. You can see it's good for blocking in almost mechanical shapes. So just to reiterate, I've used in my history, I used the move tool here to bring out my chin. I've activated symmetry on, so I can just rotate my object and I can sculpt one. I sculpt on one side and sculpt on the other. Okay, I used the clay build up to create my kind of crazy looking lines, and I used the Z sub with the clay build up here to cut in. And then I used the standard brush on with an alpha on to create texture on my object. There's more different textures again, look almost like a football type of texture. If I go back to C add, it will add to it rather than cut into it. Okay. And then for the, the side that I was using to make more kind of hard surface sculpting, I used polish and trim. 
okay so that's all I'm going to cover in this video is those two brushes but with one more the snake tool snake tool here has been around in ZBrush for a very long time but up until the last edition was a bit um, disjointed it would break you would bring stuff out like this and as you can see it's breaking the polygons are breaking there's not enough polygons but if we press this which is called the sculptress button now I can make little tentacles or tree branches or veins with it. And again, I can bring up my draw size. So that sculptures button without breaks. Turn it on. Bring now my intensity is up. Bring now my draw size. And look, I can create a lovely little almost like Chinese dragon, earthworm gym looking tentacles on my creature now he looks like he could do before I finish him you know this is what's great about ZBrush now I'm seeing a face so what if I went back in with my clay build up but I put it on drag and on Z sub and I can make two eye holes here look my creature and I'll try clay build up I was on the wrong button there clay build up on drag it's too ruby now he's almost looking like he's made a rock okay and what I can do is I can go in and maybe take my primitive shapes brush so I have a primitive shapes one primitive shapes here and I can put two half circles for eyes and now like I showed you in the first video those two circles have masked off so I'm going to go to split split mass points and now my eyes here are separate I almost have some kind of weird looking um, golem creature like he's made of stone reminds me of a couple of different things I'm gonna I'm gonna keep him and play with him as a concept at another time but that is all for now and that was just to get you through some brushes and some texturing with basic brushes and ZBrush and don't forget if I press T by mistake oh no I'm not in 3d anymore so I press T again layer clear and bring my main object back to the front and activate symmetry was on at all times okay so i'll see you in the next video